Professional caregivers work with many patients, covering the whole range of conditions. Some require minimal care to live satisfying, fulfilling lives. Others need more constant, intensive care. In this program, we want to introduce health professionals to the problems and needs of the Parkinson's disease patient. The nature of Parkinson's disease means that many of the 33,000 Parkinson's patients in Michigan now living at home will very likely receive institutional care someday. And so, it's extremely likely that nurses or health care aides will have Parkinson's disease patients under their care sometime in their career. This will place a tremendous burden on those caregivers who do not understand Parkinson's disease or the special needs of those who suffer from its effects. More importantly, if caregivers are not informed, the patient suffers. And that is the greatest burden of all. Throughout this program and its attending written materials, we will introduce professional caregivers to the facts about Parkinson's disease, its prevalence, cause, and current treatments. The program will discuss in greater detail the specific problems Parkinson's patients and their caregivers deal with on a regular basis. These problems are broken up into five categories. Medication and its side effects, emotional needs, speech and communication difficulties, limited mobility, and nutritional deficiencies. Throughout the program, we will hear testimonials from professionals, family members, and even patients who will give clear, penetrating, and personal insights into the difficulties and skills involved in caring for Parkinson's patients. The total well-being of the Parkinson's patient greatly depends upon the knowledge caregivers have about the disease. Better informed caregivers can assist the Parkinson's patients to live their lives as fully as possible until more effective treatments can be developed. Parkinson's disease is a chronic and usually progressive neurological disease that affects 1% of the population over 50. That means in Michigan, approximately 35,000 people are affected. Most people live with the disease in their own homes. But according to a recent survey conducted by the Michigan Parkinson's Foundation, nursing homes in the state now care for approximately 2,000 Parkinson's patients. The cause of Parkinson's disease is unknown. It is not hereditary and is found equally in men and women it is not preventable. Several theories are being studied. One being investigated is that environmental toxins may be a cause, but researchers are looking at a number of alternative explanations. Parkinson's essentially is the lack of dopamine, a chemical messenger in the brain, which is manufactured in a midline section of the brain in the brainstem. This chemical helps to transmit messages from the brain to muscles throughout the body and signals the pattern of muscle movements. For unknown reasons, cells that produce this chemical messenger die. Even though the mind wants to move muscles, the message is not adequately transmitted. Movements may be slowed, decreased in dexterity, or difficult to initiate. Parkinson's is treated by replenishing the effects of dopamine with the use of various medications. These treatments are similar to management of diabetes with insulin. Treatment with medication helps control the disease and allows the patient to lead as normal a life as possible. Parkinson's disease is diagnosed by a neurologist who does a thorough examination and history of the patient. Other diseases mimic Parkinson's, but a good neurological exam will determine if the symptoms are caused by Parkinson's, some other condition, or due to the effects of certain medication. The symptoms of Parkinson's appear differently in each patient. Vicki Bershew, nurse clinician and research coordinator in the clinical neuroscience program at Sinai Hospital in Detroit, explains. Well, a neurologist is your best way of being diagnosed, although other family practitioners should know the four hallmark signs of Parkinson's. Uh, they should be aware of and observe for resting tremor and that tremor can be on either side, either on one side or the other or both sides. You can find tremor in all the extremities of the body. You can also see tremor in the jaw. You'll see it in, in the facial expression. Uh, the tremor can uh, be diagnosed in that it's at a resting time for the patient. So if they are purposely or purposefully moving, they will, you'll find a lessening of the tremor most of the time. It will either go away or decrease. Uh, that's one of the diagnostics for Parkinson's. Another is that you're looking for rigidity or stiffness of the body. And this rigidity is seen in all areas of the body. You'll see this in the arms, the legs, the facial expression. Often you'll see this in the face and it'll be a masked expression. Um, rigidity is 
it varies in degrees of uh, uh, from being no problem at all with no discomfort to actually having some pain and, and extreme discomfort and the stiffness of the bodies. Another feature for a Parkinson's is the bradykinesia, which means slowness of movement. And the bradykinesia combined with the rigidity uh, gives you that slow, stooped posture. Bradykinesia affects all the activities of the body. It doesn't just slow the legs or, or slow the walk, it actually slows down everything. So you'll find that there's slowness of movement, there's uh, inability because of the sl slowness to button your buttons or to operate the utensils while eating, to pick up your cup, you're just so very slow and, and pronounced in your movement and your efforts. It's, um, although tremor can be tolerated more readily in patients, bradykinesia affects you in such a general way that it's one of the most disabling components of the features of Parkinson's. And the fourth feature I want to mention is the postural difficulties, the postural imbalances. Uh, and, and that's very, very um, difficult for people to deal with. That can come and go also, but in its extreme form, there's just almost an inability to hold your balance at all. Accidents occur when there's this postural problem. And often you, the neurologist will check for this by a backward tapping to see if the, the patient can hold their balance or if they lose their balance and topple sideways without being able to defend themselves from the fall because they're slow, of course, with their movements. So they have no ability to keep themselves upright. This is one of the reasons why I think there's some depression. They become more dependent upon others. They cannot predictably accomplish anything. And it interferes with almost every task in their daily lives. So it's an important component of Parkinson's. The commonality in Parkinson's is that the disease is very individual. Not only from person to person, but in, within that one person from hour to hour. Their tremor may differ in a 24-hour uh, period of time. It may be prominent within the morning hours, may go away by noontime, and it's, it's very uh, unpredictable at times. Also, there are days that it's totally predictable. So those two components alone make it very individual for each person. Well, just experience with the Parkinson's, understanding the illness and how it fluctuates from day to day and from patient to patient, and then knowing your patient once you've familiarized yourself with them listening to them, but it's just familiarity, knowledge of the disease, and sensitivity to the people you're caring for. As caregivers, we need to recognize that we have to individualize care for the Parkinsonian over the course of each day. We should promote as much independence as possible, but provide assistance when necessary. How we provide care for the patient is very much governed by the person's symptoms. Accompanying this video is a packet of handouts with additional references on how to deal with the various symptoms and concerns of the Parkinsonian. The ultimate goal is to assist the individual to live as independent a life as possible and to provide support in a constructive manner. People don't die of Parkinson's, their overall health suffers, and so quality of life is greatly influenced by the care they receive. Both their physical and emotional health may depend upon how knowledgeable their caregiver is about the management of Parkinson. Let's examine a few of the common problems experienced by Parkinsonians in extended care facilities and what you as caregivers can do to effectively plan for their care. We will concentrate on medications and their side effects, emotional needs, speech and communication difficulties, limited mobility, and nutritional deficiencies. In each section, we will define the problems and suggest some care measures. We will also hear from patients, spouses, and experts who will share their thoughts. As this is an overview, please refer to your handouts for more detailed information. I know this from experience, that you get the nurses and the nurses' aides when it comes time for medication, to give it to them, to bring it to them, because they were on a strict schedule. I know of an instance where uh, uh, one of the Parkinson patients was in a nursing home, 
And the only time she would get her medication is when the nurses decided, well, it's 12 o'clock, I gotta take my, make my rounds and give the medication. Or six o'clock, well, that's my time for medication. So she makes her rounds and that's what she gives it to them. Now, a, a Parkinson patient should have their medication on time. Some at three hours, some at four hours. Because if they don't get it on time, they droop just like a flower. Well, when he first started on medication for the Parkinson's, he was on Artane and Sinumet. Okay. And the doctor gave him too strong a dosage, and he started hallucinating. And he'd get in, up in the morning, and he was afraid to get out of bed because he saw all kinds of things in the ceiling and crawling all over. And, and I'd tell him, come on, let's get out of bed, and we'll uh, have some breakfast and we'll go back and check later and see if it's still there, you know. We usually get the directive to whatever their family physician has prescribed for them or the neurologist in this particular case. And uh, it's difficult because they're usually assigned to the staff physician in the nursing home. Uh, he tries to follow that regime as much as possible. Uh, but then again, he may not know the, the entire history of uh, the medication regime of that individual. So it's good to have good communication between the neurologist, the family physician, and the staff physician that is in the long-term care facility uh, to understand what the patient has been going through. At this time, Parkinson's cannot be cured, only controlled. So medication suppressing symptoms are the hallmark of treatment. There are a few key points to remember. A physician knowledgeable about Parkinson's disease needs to be involved in the medical management of the patient to monitor and adjust medication. The physician must make a judgment with each medicine and evaluate the potential benefits versus the undesirable side effects. There is a careful balance in the relationship between the amount and timing of medication and whether the symptoms are controlled. The drugs must be given on time. Even a half hour difference can cause a patient great difficulty. For example, one of the most commonly used medicines may wear off and effects abruptly after two or three hours, and a delay of the next dose of medicine can be quite distressing to the patient. Because they are so dependent on their medications for effective functioning, patients commonly become clock watchers, anticipating their next dose. Please adhere to the specific schedule set up for the Parkinsonian. The timing of the medication cannot be emphasized enough. Although the medications can control symptoms quite adequately, over time the disease progresses and the patient builds up immunities to the medication. So both the dosage and the types of medication will change. Adjustments to the medication are made periodically. Make careful notes in the patient's log or journal of the reactions they have to dosages. Be accurate and make sure they're available for the staff physician to review. Also complicating the picture, a number of different medications are frequently used in combination. These combinations cause diverse reactions in the patients and need to be closely monitored. Changes in a patient's symptoms may be caused by several conditions. The disease may worsen, side effects of the medication may arise, or the medication dosage may be incorrect. Caregivers should observe the patient for changes in their condition and write it down. To do this, an hour-by-hour -hour diary log can be used. Other methods for monitoring the effects of medication are given in the handout materials supplied with this program. It is important to find out from the patient how well their medications are working. Since many patients can feel the beneficial effect of the medication when it takes hold, and also when it wears off, they should take part in determining their own medication schedule. Their insights can help round out the information provided by your own observations. With some patients, medications should be given with a meal. With others, like Cinemet, it is recommended that it be given on an empty stomach at least one half hour before meals. Combining medication with a meal lessens the occurrence of nausea and vomiting. Other Parkinsonians don't experience that problem and could take medication with water only. As you've heard, how medication is given really depends upon the patient. Work with and listen to your patients to come up with the best way for the individual to take the medication. Because of this variation, it is often necessary to experiment with the timing and dosage to obtain the optimum effect. Always work with a physician before making any change in the regime. For some persons, it can be helpful to give medication before the patient gets out of bed in the morning to maximize his ability to move, wash, and eat. 
The side effects of medications given for Parkinson's are hypotension, nausea, vomiting, confusion, hallucinations, anxiety, and abnormal movements. Side effects for the same medication vary from patient to patient and are troublesome. In addition to side effects, medication interactions are frequently problematic. Several medications that are frequently used in nursing homes that are among the drugs that should not be given in combination with anti-Parkinson drugs, drugs which should be avoided because they worsen Parkinsonism, are the dopamine blockers like Haldol, Thorazine, and Navane, which are often given for sedation and to lessen agitation, and drugs used for nausea or other GI problems such as Compazine and Reglan. Please refer to your handouts for other medications to avoid. Parkinson's medications should never be discontinued without a physician's order. Suddenly stopping medication can lead to a return of the Parkinson's symptoms and may create a life-threatening situation of rigidity and immobility. If the patient is having difficulty with side effects or if the medication loses its effectiveness, close coordination with a physician is essential. Accurate reporting by the nurse in these situations is extremely important and helpful. Some Parkinsonians have difficulty swallowing pills. Caregivers may resort to crushing the medication or placing the pill on a spoon with applesauce and allowing it to soften for a few minutes before administering the medicine. You may find other techniques to be helpful. Also, keep an eye on the patients and make sure the medication is getting swallowed and not getting caked in their teeth, as it sometimes does. In summary, be aware that medication management is the cornerstone of controlling Parkinson's symptoms, but it does not cure the disease. Medications should not be discontinued without the physician's order. The timing of medication administration is extremely important to obtain full therapeutic benefit. Careful recording of the patient's response to Parkinson's medication is necessary to determine if changes in therapy are needed. Side effects vary among patients and are managed by using supplemental medications and other comfort measures or, if intolerable, by altering the medication regimen after consultation with a physician. Several medications frequently used in nursing homes interact poorly with Parkinson's medications and should be avoided. Methods to assist patients with swallowing should be explored when necessary to ensure that the medications are taken in accurate amounts. Resources for administering medications are in the packet of materials accompanying this program. Also, consult the pharmacist for more information. to be in control of what's happening if he feels good about himself instead of as you told me this morning when I shaved you in a few spots like a piece of meat being processed. Now we don't usually talk to each other that way but I was apologizing you know the camera's going to pick up everything so let's make it look nice and without taking time because it was time to leave the house he was hassled and you said what it felt like. Remember? It was like a piece of meat being processed, not like a human being. Put your hand in your sleeve, let's get the buttons done. Oh, you missed this with the razor, zip, zip, zip. Mm -hmm. And that may be necessary at certain times of the day, but it leaves a person feeling unpersoned. There's the, 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 the one day or the next differs so much because you got a good day, you feel like a million dollars and you're all up in the air and the next day you're down the dump because things don't go as good no more. Okay. Okay. The rapid change that I, I found out, uh, in my case anyway, it's kind of frustrating. We, I think we were both a little angry about the Parkinson's. And I know I wanted to, I know that I wanted to cry about it. In fact, sometimes I still do. <laughs> But um, that was why. It was just that it hit us all of a sudden, and, and we, couldn't, we couldn't understand it. Parkinsonians are faced with a number of emotional challenges, depression, confusion, and frustration, along with the challenges of living day by day with a chronic degenerative and debilitating disease. As the caregiver, you must constantly be aware of the emotional state of your patients. The better you understand their feelings, the easier it will be to assist them. How they feel emotionally is directly linked to the disease and how it's affecting them at that moment. 
Because Parkinson's affects each patient differently at different times of the day, and any deviation causes sometimes drastic shifts in their well-being, is it any wonder that these patients are sometimes labeled uncooperative or problem patients? Depression is one component of Parkinson's disease found in over half of those diagnosed. Depression can result from the person's reaction to having a chronic illness and its progressive limitations, called a reactive depression, or be a result of changes occurring in the brain along with the Parkinson's symptoms. Depression accompanies the loss of independence, frustration, a change in roles and relationships, an inability to function, sleep problems, and medication side effects. Depression is not always expressed as sadness or tearfulness. It may be exhibited as withdrawal, loss of communication, anger, or changes in personal habits. Depression can be managed by medications, counseling, and supportive caregivers. To combat depression, get a mental health specialist involved. Set realistic goals with the patient. Concentrate on accomplishments. Be realistic. Provide time for the variability of the disease. Plan a day to accommodate periods of rest and activity. Ensure that patients understand the effects of the disease. Encourage socialization. Empathize. Be patient and understanding. Deal with a Parkinsonian with respect. And in some cases, medications may be necessary. Confusion may result as a side effect of several of the Parkinson's medications, as well as being part of the disease. The Parkinsonian may be aware that his thinking has changed and is slower. This can be very frustrating and create a number of different reactions. Recognizing there are a number of causes for confusion, it is appropriate to use the core strategies that are used with other patients. How does one cope with facing a progressively debilitating illness? Periods of denial, anger, depression, and acceptance are common. The patient must have a strong support group. Family, friends, and caregivers all play a vital role. It is essential that caregivers realize that people with Parkinson's disease are like the weather. One moment the patient is very active, suddenly he freezes and is practically helpless. It makes you know that you have to have patience. That's the big thing. I sometimes think I should have a sign made, put it on my chest, and say patience for those, patience for the people that are caregivers and the ones that have it, for all of us. I used to smile considerably more than I do now. It's, I have to think about smiling now. Before, it was something that came very naturally. I used to talk fast before, and now I want to say things, and um, it don't fit together. The slowness and the, the things I want to say. I want to say too many things in too short a time. And then I mumble. Then they tell me, talk, talk normal, and don't mumble. The more I try not to mumble, the more I mumble. She shakes my arms, my arms are... And things will shake, and it goes away. And uh, I, uh, I have good days and bad days. Sure. Some days I get all really well. Other days it's just another murder. Not only is it difficult for you to understand the Parkinsonian, but it's frustrating for him. It may appear that the person doesn't understand you and is confused, but what may be happening is that he just can't formulate and project his words in a manner in which you can understand. It is difficult to determine whether the person is happy, sad, or angry because of the person's inability to speak clearly and lack of facial expression. Not being able to match what you think the person is feeling with their speech makes it very difficult to communicate. The speech problems you will run into are Unclear speech. It will be low-pitched, monotonous, slow, and lacking modulation. This is caused by a combination of several effects of Parkinson's. Facial rigidity, slowness of movement, and reduced muscular strength. Difficult initiation. Some people have difficulty initiating speech, and when they do, you'll hear a gush of words which are not understandable, and quickly they become so quiet that it's difficult to hear them. Uncontrolled salivation. 
Frequently, saliva flows involuntarily from the mouth because it is not directed to the back of the mouth and swallowed. This drooling can be visually disturbing and create problems with breathing. How should you respond to these challenges? Caregivers should explain all procedures slowly and clearly. Encourage the patient to speak slowly as well. Do not hurry them. Ask questions requiring simple responses and encourage them to speak as much as possible. If the words gush out in a hurried fashion, have them take an, a deep breath and concentrate on speaking slowly, throwing the words out as far as they can. Remind patients to swallow. Give praise for accomplishments. Repeat their responses to make sure you understand what they've said. A speech therapist can give suggestions or tools, such as flashcards, communication boards, or voice amplifiers to assist the patient. Communicating effectively can be very challenging, exhausting, and frustrating for the Parkinsonian. Their mind may be intact, but they cannot communicate what they want to express and when they want to say it. Encourage them to talk about their feelings and recognize their frustration. Do not let them lose touch with others, but keep them in the mainstream of people. Withdrawal is easy, but undesirable. That's a lot, that's a lot slower. And especially, and uh, when I'm in bed sleeping or laying in bed, I have a hard time moving from one position to the other. And. Um, My, uh, it's, uh, I don't know how to explain it to you. It's, uh, if I want to do something that takes me uh, longer and I have to think about it more. And also I'm aware of my um, legs as being weaker than they used to be. I can negotiate this distance down the hall outside here. But not at, at uh, high speed, which is another reason for wanting to slow down, slack off. That nothing is constant. At 10 o'clock in the morning, he can get up and walk. At 10.30 in the morning, he can't move. And a lot of caregivers or nurses in hospitals, and we've experienced this, do not accept this. In their minds, if he did it once, they can do it again. They don't realize the on and off thing with Parkinson's. But if nothing is constant, it can change in one hour. In 10 minutes, it can change. We have um, professionals, that is physical therapists and occupational therapists that will help set up the regime for the individual resident, including the Parkinsonian patient. Uh, the physical therapist will concentrate on strengthening exercise. He, will, he or she will also set up a program so that the mobility of, the, of um, the resident is either maintained at a level or increased if there is some pot particular potential. Uh, gait, for example, uh, he'll help to improve the gait so that the patient is functional, as independent as possible. Uh, maybe that independence is with some type of mechanical aid or assistance, but at least it is to the patient's fullest potential. As you've learned, manifestations of Parkinson's disease include rigidity, bradykinesia or slow movement, tremors, gait disorders, and problems with balance. Each of these causes drastic changes in a person's ability to move. Variations occur among patients and in response to medication, and no two people exhibit the same combination of problems. These mobility problems make a simple move, like turning over in bed, a very difficult and painful process. Rigidity and muscle stiffness often occur as an early and progressive symptom of Parkinson's. Often, it is seen on both sides of the body, but usually with one side predominating. Rigid muscles appear to be tight and tense. They feel contracted and firm. The patient experiences this symptom as a tired or aching feeling. They will also complain of pain, cramping, headaches, or stiffness in the neck, shoulder, or back. Lower back pain results from stiffness in the spinal muscles, and the problem is compounded by the tendency to lean forward. Similarly, shoulder and neck pains occur and can also be severe. 
The chest pains may be the result of stiff muscles of the chest wall. In advanced stages of Parkinson's, this leads to problems with shallow and poor breathing habits. The lack of use of these weakened chest muscles can lead to respiratory problems, resulting in pneumonia. To assist with rigidity problems, begin an exercise program. Include range of motion exercises, whether active or passive, on a regular basis to prevent loss of motion. Deep breathing exercises should be instituted to maintain chest expansion. And medications can be given for pain and cramping. Bradykinesia refers to slowness of movement. This slowness can affect all muscles. Of the classic symptoms, bradykinesia can be the most disturbing. This slowness of all body movement causes both the patient and the caregiver to be frustrated. The desire to move more rapidly is there, but the body doesn't respond. The caregiver needs to be aware of this and to allow more time for the Parkinsonian to complete activities and to support the patient's efforts to complete actions on his own. This slowness even affects thinking. The Parkinsonian will process information slowly and respond slowly. Coupled with the problems in communication, which we've already talked about, it is difficult to determine whether the Parkinsonian has a deterioration of mental process or with response time. Patients may also experience freezing episodes. Literally, the patient may be unable to initiate movement. This may occur more frequently as patients experience less positive effects from their medication. The medication just doesn't work as well as it used to. The main Parkinson medication, Cinemet, is associated with this problem. All of the patient's movements are slowed, and several attempts may be needed in order to initiate an action or movement. For example, if the freezing episode occurs when the person is walking, help him to rock back and forth to create movement and count. Place a foot in front of him and have him step over it. Help him to think about what he's going to do by describing the movement. This combines thought with action and may help him to move. Walking through narrow areas like doorway or turning also seem to trigger freezing. Keep this in mind if your patient is suddenly or unpredictably unable to perform a movement you have seen him do previously. Falls are common at these times and can be triggered by the person's attempt to turn rapidly. Because of these and other problems, such as the shuffling gait and a stooped posture common to Parkinson's, the caregiver must be very aware of this situation and take precautions to ensure safety. Tremors are another classic symptom of Parkinson's disease and occur in different parts of the body while at rest. When movement is initiated, they are reduced. Although the least debilitating, this symptom is problematic for the Parkinsonian because tremors are easily detected by others and are emotionally taxing. Tremors can be triggered by stressful situations. Having the person grasp something or hold someone's hand can help in controlling the tremors. Gait problems and changes in posture complete the major mobility problems. Gait disturbances are a main diagnosing symptom. Often there is a decreased arm swing on one side of the body, a shuffling walk and dragging feet, slowness in turning and a stooped posture. Postural disturbances can be quite severe, contributing to unsteadiness and falls. Patients will retropulse, and hip fractures are all too common. These postural problems also make it difficult for the person to rise from a chair or bed. Physical therapists can assist in recommending transferring methods. Unfortunately for Parkinson's patients, the symptoms affecting mobility are often the least improved by medication. Good physical therapy and exercise treatments are among the best ways to attempt to maintain the current level of functioning for as long as possible. The nurse's main objective for this problem should be to focus on obtaining proper walking equipment if needed, such as walkers, and paying attention to the type of shoes the patient wears. Crepe and rubber soles, for example, can contribute to tripping for patients who drag their feet. Over time, the prescribed drugs will lose some of their effectiveness, or changes will be needed in the type or amount of drugs. As the disease progresses, fluctuations in the patient's mobility will occur, from extreme slowness of movement to the point of freezing, to normal movement or dyskinesia. Dyskinetic movements are uncoordinated and uncontrollable. Not only are these movements uncomfortable for the patient, they are also tiring. This is one of the key signs indicating that the medication regimen should be re-evaluated. Fluctuations in movements and when they occur in relation to when the medication is given should be accurately recorded by the nurse. Movement problems are hallmarks of Parkinson's disease. Nursing care depends upon how these symptoms are expressed and managed by the patient. 
Careful assessment of the patient's functional ability is paramount to treatment and must be individualized for each patient. Try to remember that deteriorating mobility and increasing dependency is psychologically difficult for these adults. And the physical exertion caused by the dyskinesia or the effort to move may cause the Parkinsonian to lose weight, which will increase the need for high calorie supplemental feedings to keep their weight up. Which brings us to our next issue, nutritional problems. In the beginning, I, I want to eat like I normally do, fast. Oh. I got things to do. Right. And then things fall off your fork, off your spoon, and you couldn't mix it. And the last part, instead of falling up, it falls on your clothes okay. or on the floor. It's OK when you're home, when you go out to a restaurant. I said to my wife, I said, I don't want to go out to eat anymore. Everybody's staring at me. It was not true, but I had it in my mind that they're all watching me. Now we got a special kind of spoon that we got from John, and that that's shaped a little different and it picks up more. It has a more, there's more spoon to it, and it seems to help. Of course, now I'm home, I'm more relaxed. It seems that it don't bother me too much anymore. From a nutritional point of view, we try to adhere to their likes and their dislikes, um, and within a good regime of, of uh, accommodating those swallowing problems, too. Uh, part of the nutrition, of course, is affected by their impaired mobility. They may have the tremors, uh, which will affect them in uh, grasp, uh, holding a cup, uh, holding a fork, uh, so that they can eat and be as independent as possible. Uh, my meals. I have to have everything cut up. I can't really do my fork very well anymore. I can't, well, once it's cut up for me, I can take it then. That's feeding myself. Um. There are a number of nutritional problems to be aware of with Parkinson's disease. Many patients have difficulty swallowing due to weakened muscular control brought on by the disease. The side effects from medication, such as nausea and dryness of the mouth, inhibit ingestion. The problems with self-feeding, when impaired movement and tremors make eating a long, laborious task. And depression can cause a loss of appetite, weight loss, and constipation. For difficulty in swallowing, seat the patient in an upright position and stay with them. Provide semi-soft foods and encourage fluid intake. There may be a problem with choking, so be sure and carefully assess the patient. One technique which can be used to reduce choking risk is to coach the patient by reminding him to swallow. Suctioning may be necessary, so equipment should be readily available. Aspiration pneumonia is a serious, sometimes fatal complication of Parkinson's. To minimize side effects from medications, administer them before meals to obtain an even effect, to prevent gastric irritation, and to minimize dryness in the mouth during the meals. Again, try to schedule medication one half hour before or 45 minutes after meals. It is preferable for the medications to be taken beforehand in order to maximize their effectiveness. Scheduling medications carefully can not only keep the medicines consistent and effective, but increase the patient's ability to eat. Self-feeding should be encouraged as much as possible. At times, the Parkinsonian may be able to do it on his own. At other times, he may need assistance. This is not malingering. This is due to the disease. To maximize self-care, place food and drinks within easy reach. Provide rest periods before meals. A food warmer may be helpful in allowing the person enough time to eat and enjoy his meal. A flexible straw for fluids can be used if tremor interferes with using a cup. An occupational therapist can be consulted for other ideas about assistive devices. Should weight loss and loss of appetite become a problem, maintain a high calorie diet which can be easily eaten. Monitor the person's weight. Frequent small feedings and supplementary high calorie fluids such as eggnog, milkshakes, and malts can also be added. Finding out what the individual enjoys eating and making the environment accepting and enjoyable may also stimulate interest in mealtimes. Constipation and impactions are due to inactivity, side effects of the medication, and the disease. The diet can be altered by adding roughage, increasing fluid intake, and establishing a routine. Should general measures not be effective, stool softeners or suppositories may be in order. 
Monitoring the frequency and consistency of stools as well as checking for impaction is a general nursing care item that should be carried out regularly. An adequate diet is essential and following the Food and Drug Administration's recommended requirements is a sound plan. Unless contraindicated, the latest information about Parkinson's suggests that limiting protein early in the day may increase the effectiveness of medications, and increasing protein towards the end of the day helps to ensure that there is an adequate daily intake of protein. In summary, the diet plays an important role in the health of the Parkinsonian and may be modified based upon symptoms and treatment regimen. As you can see, Parkinson's disease offers some unique challenges to you, the caregiver. Each Parkinsonian will exhibit different symptoms and reactions at different times of the day. The disease and the medications used to manage it can at one time give you a patient that seems to be making great progress, and a few hours later, a patient you are convinced is malingering or just being stubborn. The fact is, the patient is just unable to function at that particular moment. Remember, it frustrates them too. In this program, we have reviewed the five key areas in the management of Parkinson's. Medication and its side effects, the emotional states and needs of the Parkinsonian, speech and communication difficulties, limited mobility issues and how to assist the patient, and the nutritional demands the disease places upon the patient and you. To best assist and manage the patient's care, communicate with them and their families. Observe their reactions to medications. Keep accurate logs. Encourage them to be as independent as possible, and most importantly, understand the variability of the illness and how it can fluctuate from patient to patient and from day to day. Self-esteem and self-worth are very fragile, but with your sensitivity to the problems and concerns of Parkinson's patients, you can help care for your patient in a more comprehensive way and help them maintain their independence for as long as possible. It's important things. The on and off syndrome of movability and capability and the medication timing. I feel if all nurses, nurses aides, and anyone else involved with Parkinson's patients can master those things, it will make a much better life for Parkinson's patients. Well, the Parkinsonian thinks the same thing for when they're doing it. They think, oh, it's all mental. I can do it. I know I can do it. But you can't do it. It's, it with Parkinson's, you, may, you just are not able to do it anymore for a while. And it can change from hour to hour. Knowing what the disease can do to you, but unpredictably, it can lift you up to heights of uh, ability and then cast you down if, it's, if it has a mind to. It's uh, tempting to think of Parkinson's as a kind of a mean old man lurking behind the corner who is waiting to trip you up or do something like that. I suppose maybe some people would understand the disease better if they could see it in those terms, or terms like those. 